Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a few weeks now since I've posted my last video here on YouTube. I just wanted to say I've been taking a bit of a break from YouTube, but we are back with more content related to LLMs and AI in general. And what better way to start off the year than what DeepSeek released today, which is their DeepSeek R1 model. And they're claiming that they have performance on par with OpenAI 01. There is a technical report and it's also including open source models, so distilled models, which are available for research and commercial purposes. In other words, this is such an awesome release and a good start of the year for the community because we have now a very powerful model that we can use to do research on and can build on top of. As you know, R1 is DeepSeek thinking or reasoning model as they are referred to today. And you can actually access it here. So what I'm going to do in this video is just do a brief summary of the paper. And I want to do like a TLDR for it. I'm not going to spend too much time on the details, but I also want to try out a few examples, some things that I actually tested on the previous preview model that they released. So let's go to the paper and check out some of the important details. And then we're also going to take it for a spin because we can access it right here today. I believe everyone should be able to access this. So that's another thing that I really like about DeepSeek. And they even have an app that's available now. Good work, DeepSeek. Congratulations to the team. And let's get started with the report and jump into some examples. From my point of view, I think this is such a breakthrough because it is one of the first open source models that competes directly with the likes of the OpenAI O1 model. And we can see that by the performance itself. So you can see on code forces some of these different benchmarks with which these reasoning models are using to showcase your strength and performance, how similar it is in terms of capability. And I would say it's a very competitive model just based on these results. Now, these are just benchmark results. I think it's important to also test the models. So the basic idea of this particular DeepSeek R1 model is that they want to train a system or propose a training strategy, which incentivizes, as you can see in the title here, the reasoning capabilities in the large language model itself. And reinforcement learning is going to be the key and main theme throughout the paper. And I think the method itself is very interesting because it's not really clear what exactly leads to very capable reasoning models. I think it's still very early days and there has been a lot of experimentation with ideas such as Monte Carlo tree search. Some don't use that in this paper that's not used. And it's a very interesting approach to enhance the reasoning capabilities of these models. So let's take a look at some of the details here. I will look, however, at some of the important points. So for instance, I want to summarize here the contributions. Now, they have applied reinforcement learning to a base model. So that's the one of the first steps that they're using here. Okay, so we went from a base model to applying reinforcement learning. And this again says without relying on supervised fine tuning. And they're mentioning here that this approach allows the model to explore chain of thought for solving complex problems. Basically, it could lead to a very coherent uh, model that can do long reasoning, reflection, these chain of thought steps to solve very complex problems. They demonstrate capabilities such as self-verification, reflection, and generating long chain of thoughts, as I was saying. And it says, notably, it is the first open research to validate that reasoning capabilities of LLMs can be incentivized purely through reinforcement learning. I think this is one of the interesting findings from this paper and without the need for SFT. Most of these approaches are using SFT as a you know first step and this one jumps right from base model directly to RLs. And then they introduce a pipeline, which would include multiple steps to develop DeepSeek R1. So keep in mind, there's two versions here. So we have the DeepSeek R1 zero, which is from base to RL. And then there is this DeepSeek R1, which will involve different steps. And I'm gonna go through the different steps. So they say, in summary, the pipeline incorporates two RL stages in at discovering improved reasoning patterns and aligning with human preferences. So how to make a very capable model in terms of reasoning, because that's really what most of these LLMs or most of the advanced LLMs are doing today, along with making sure that they have this alignment, right? We don't sacrifice the alignment because alignment is really important for application or putting these things into production. So they have as well as two SFT stages that serve as a seed for the model's reasoning and non-reasoning capabilities, right? It's not just about reasoning, but also those non-reasoning capabilities. So we're talking about a complex and very general system that can do all of these different things and there's no sacrifice of performance 
in terms of reasoning and some of the other important capabilities of the LLM. So that's roughly speaking the pipeline here. And they also have this distillation process, which they use to distill some models. Uh, I think the models that they're using are Quinn and Lama, I believe. So we're going to see some of the results later, but this is just a summary of it. Basically, the approach is going to be like this. So the first step, as I was saying, is this, this DeepSeq R10. Right, where you go from a base model applied reinforcement learning. So that's being applied to the base model, no supervised data. And that's the first step. They use GRPO as their RL algorithm. So you can see all the details there. And then they have some kind of template that they use. Okay, you can take a look at the template. And then they have like the reward modeling and they adopt a rule-based reward system that mainly consists of these two types of rewards. So there's an accuracy reward and then format reward, which is really important here to have this kind of consistent output of these tokens for the thinking part of the model. So these are the results or a summary of it. You can see that this is the model here that we're talking about. And then we have the 01 mini and 01012 snapshot of that. And you can see that this model is quite capable. I mean, it does come close in terms of performance and sometimes it even outperforms the OpenAI 01 model on all of these important benchmarks. So like code forces and live code, GPQA demo. And I noticed that this is one of the benchmarks that the OpenAI folks really focus a lot on. And that's because this is a very complex benchmark. And so you can see the results there. This DeepSeq R10 model is pretty capable already. Um, and this is the beginning. So this is just showing that you can build something without all the fancy stuff like MCTS, very simple reward models and so on. And they also show here the accuracy of Amy, right, on DeepSeq R10 during training. So for each question, we sample 16 responses and calculate the overall average accuracy to ensure a stable evaluation. So these are some of the performances here. This is talking about this particular model and they have this as a demonstration of how RL can drive a model to improve its reasoning capabilities in an autonomous way. So I think there is a lot to dig into with this specific finding. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this. I think this can become a really interesting approach to optimizing these models for reasoning. And they even show this chart here, which I found also super interesting. So this is about the average response length of DeepSeq R10 on the training set during the RL process. So DeepSeq R10 naturally learns to solve reasoning tasks with more thinking time. And we have seen this before, right? The OpenAI models and some of the results that they have shown also show something quite similar, right? The more the model spends on thinking, the better it gets at some of these reasoning tasks. So the aha moment I think was interesting. They shared that a particularly intriguing phenomenon observed during the training of the CR10 is the occurrence of an aha moment. This moment, as illustrated in table three, occurs in an intermediate version of the model. During this phase, this model learns to allocate more thinking time to a problem by re-evaluating its initial approach. This behavior is not only a testament to the model's growing reasoning abilities, which is what they wanted to show with these different charts, but also captivating example of how reinforcement learning can lead to unexpected and sophisticated outcomes. No, if you're a researcher in the space, this is a very exciting result, right? Because for a long time, we know that RL has the capability, right? With AlphaGo and all these different systems that are based on RL, we know that it has the potential, but we really haven't seen a purely RL approach to LLMs. And I think we are starting to see that here in this paper in particular. So there are more details here if you want to read it. I'm not going to go through all of that. But I think one of the issues with DeepSeq R10, which they report here, is this poor readability. While it can output coherent, long reasoning, reflection, COT steps, and so on, it does suffer from this poor readability and language mixing. So they want to address that. And the way they address that is via this multi-training procedure. So the first part is going to be reinforcement learning with cold start. Okay, so that's basically going into like from RL to SFT. So the DeepSeq R1 is not something we're going to throw away. It's something we're actually going to build on top of. And that's kind of the idea here. So you can see here it says we collect thousands of cold start data to fine tune DeepSeq V3 base as a starting point for RL. And compared to DeepSeq R10, the advantages of cold start data include the readability part and also some other things that I mentioned here. And then they go from the supervised fine tuning to RL. So this is the reasoning oriented reinforcement learning. So again, it's applying very similar or the same RL training process as they applied to DeepSeq R10. So they're just reusing that. And the idea is that they want to do that to enhance the model reasoning capabilities, in particular, 
on reasoning intensive tasks such as coding, mathematics, science, and logic reasoning. So that's the idea here, or at least the, the high level idea. And again, they mentioned something about language mixing, which they want to kind of tackle. And they showed that they introduce a language consistency reward during RL training. And that's how they can improve on those different issues that they saw in that initial um, model that they train, right? The DeepSeq R10. And together with that, what they do is they now introduce the supervised fine tuning, right? With rejection sampling. Uh, this is a very common step that's being applied, you know, to some of these models. So nothing surprising here. What's interesting is the different steps, right? Like they apply these different rounds of training, which helps create a more stable system or train a more stable system. And also obviously incorporating all of these advanced reasoning capabilities as well. So this is just talks about reasoning data. There are 600K reasoning related training examples. And this is RL for all scenarios. This, this again, it's gonna go from SFT to RL, basically applying reinforcement learning again. And this one, the idea is that they want to improve the model helpfulness and harmlessness while keeping those reasoning capabilities, right? So there's a lot of instability that can happen in these different phases of training this system. So it's important that these models are also very aligned. That's not just having good reasoning capabilities, but have good alignment. And part of the reason why that's important is because and I saw this when I did my early tests on the preview of this model. I noticed that the model is really good at the thinking steps, but it sometimes like didn't understand the intent of my prompt, right? That could be a really big issue there. Um, and so you cannot really sacrifice the human preferences because that is what makes these models, you know, usable. And at the same time, you want to keep this reasoning capability. So it's kind of a balance between the two. And I think this is early days with this research. I think there might be other more effective ways to do this. And then there's a lot of experiments here. I'm just going to jump here to the main results. These are the main results. So you can see DeepSeq R1 here. Very good model. You can see how it compares with the OpenAI O1 models right here. And very capable model overall. There is also results on the distal model. I'm not going to summarize this here, but you can check that out on your own. We're going to jump into some examples about the model, but I highly encourage you to look at the paper. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If I missed anything important here, as I said, I just finished reading and overviewing this paper at least one round. I need to go back again and look at the paper. There's a lot of really cool details in the paper itself that I may have missed in this video. Just let me know if you have anything that comes up. I'm happy to provide more context or details. I want to actually show you here first before I start with the examples. I wanted to highlight first that they have an app that you can download. So if you want to use this in your mobile, you can do that. And I'm going to go first to this burn candles because this one, it was really about understanding first what the problem is. And I think this is the alignment that's missing from these models. So I think they saw a lot of examples of people trying out different prompts and they noticed that, oh, while it is doing really good in the thinking steps, it kind of misunderstood the intention of the task itself. And that's really bad. You need to have good reasoning capabilities, of course, but you also, or problem solving capabilities, but you also have to have a way to train the model to be really good at understanding the task itself so that it's pretty useful in the real world. Let's take a look at how it's gonna perform on that. I haven't done this one. I have tried other tasks here and I really wanna show you because there are some interesting and exciting results. And this one, obviously, when I did this the first time with the preview model of their thinking model, this one answered candle four, which is the wrong one. It should be this one. So let's see if that was improved. So I'll go to the chat again here. I want to enable deep think. I don't really need search. I'm just going to do deep think. I'm going to just prompt it like that. Okay. So it's going to do thinking. And then this is the thinking steps. Those are the thinking steps. I think I'm not sure if it's this one or the other models, but I noticed that there was no distinction between the thinking steps and the actual response. But now I can see that distinction. And you can see here that it actually got it right. So you can see this one. It understood the task. It says the first candle blown out is the one that burned the least, which is correct. Hence, remaining the longest among the options candle tree has the most equals, indicating it was extinguished earliest. I mean, this, while a very simple task at first glance, uh, most of them all struggle with this. And it's really good. Even the previous model, as I showed you, suffered from issues of understanding the actual task. But this one is clearly re working really well. So that's already a huge improvement on this particular math puzzle. Now, let's look at uh, this crossword puzzle. So I actually gave it this crossword puzzle, which I think it's 
Probably one of the tasks that I usually test these models on that none of the models can actually solve. This includes the O1 models. So it'll be interesting to try this on O3 when that does come out. So I'm excited about that one too. But this is one of the tasks, the crossword puzzle that really none of these models can solve. And that's because for this task in particular, it's not just about reasoning, it's about understanding, it's about understanding references, uh, having access to a lot of complex knowledge and very deep knowledge, in fact, and none of these models can get this correct. And also I saw that this particular model wasn't able to solve this one as well. Like it got some of them correct, but most of them it got wrong. So no surprises here. So let's look at one of the interesting tasks that I tried before with the previous iteration of this thinking model uh, that wasn't correct. And I actually gave it the task again and I told it, let me see here, write a bash script that takes a matrix presented as a string with format. This is the format and prints the transpose in the same format. And okay, did a lot of thinking. I mean, you can see how long this thinking is. And then it generated a script. So what I did is I took this script and then I copy pasted it into my script locally and I tested, right? Obviously I have to test it to see if it's correct. Now the previous thinking model that they previewed before obviously did not get this correct. And you can watch my previous video on that here on my YouTube channel. But I wanted to check out if it actually got it correct this time. So I tested it. Here is the actual script. You can see it here. I just copy pasted it right here. And then down here, I can actually run it. So I actually run it already. So it's this one right here. So this one is the deep transpose.sh. That's the script where I pasted the code. And then I give, I'm giving it this as an input. And you can see that here, I ran it already. I'm just gonna run it, right? You can see here that it gave me the correct response. So that's actually the correct output. And in a lot of cases, it was giving me the wrong output, the wrong matrix, in, or maybe the wrong dimension and so on. And sometimes it didn't even work. So I've been testing this particular task and, and I noticed that there's definitely an enhancement in terms of the code that was being generated by this particular thinking model. So. It's great to see the results on that. And I do believe I have this transpose matrix.sh, which is the one from OpenAI. And I just want to show you here that the code is a little bit different. So I'm just going to run it again or run this one just to show you that the OpenAI models actually got this correct. And I'm talking about the O1 model. Oh, sorry, I did not provide the input. I'm just going to copy this. So yeah, you can see that this one actually got it correct. Okay, so that's kind of the thing that I want to show about code. So that's the example. I'm very impressed that finally this DeepSeq model got it correct. So this is definitely an improvement. All right, so going back here, I have a few more tests that I wanted to showcase. Now, I actually took one of the prompts originally posted in the blog post about reasoning LLMs from OpenAI, where is this this particular task, which I found interesting, which is it needs to decode something here. And basically it goes through that entire process. You can see how long that is. And then it says the decoding message is there are three R's in strawberry. I thought it was funny when OpenAI released that. And you can see that this model also has that capability, which is really interesting. There is this test that I did too. And this one, I think I tested this one on, their, on the Quinn model. So this one is about, please add a pair of parentheses to the incorrect equation. And when I look at the results, this seems, yeah, this is the correct result right here. So that's really good to see. All right, and those are the examples. If you wanna test out more examples, um, I do have some videos where I tested more things like mad problems and things like that. I will be testing these models more and more. All right, that'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. And thanks again for supporting the channel. I'm very excited to continue doing YouTube videos. Let me know what are the interesting topics. I will be posting a lot more tutorials as well this year, but I'm happy to be back on YouTube and wishing everyone a good start of the year and whatever you're doing, whatever you're working on. Do leave a comment below, as I said, if there's anything that you found interesting as well, anything that you wanna share in addition to what I shared, and I'll see you all in the next one.